Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh And good day everyone Welcome back to my channel This is ASM 653 We continue on the last chapter 6 On determining system requirement Okay uh, The second part is on the radical method For determining system uh, requirement Alright okay. Actually whether traditional or contemporary uh, The method for determining system requirement that you have gone through uh, on this chapter uh, apply to any requirement determination effort so regardless of its motivation but most of what you have learned has traditionally uh, been applied to the system development project that involve uh, automating existing process uh, so the analysts use system requirement determination to understand current problems and opportunities as well as to determine what is needed and desired in the future system right? uh, Typically the current way of doing things has a large impact on the new system But in some organizations uh, Though the management is looking for new ways to perform the current tasks uh, These new ways may be radically different from how things are done now But the payoff may be enormous So the changes is uh, is welcome okay actually a uh, few people may be need to do uh, the same uh, work uh, relationship with customers may improve dramatically and process may become more much more efficient uh, and effective all of which can result in increase of profits and performance so the overall process uh, by which the current method and are replaced uh, with radically new method is generally referred to uh, this one, BPR, Business Process Reengineering. <coughs> okay, sorry, guys, this one, yeah. Okay, although the term BPR ni, uh, usually associated with the management uh, fields, yeah. In the project management, I think you have uh, look on this one. Okay, the definition is search for implementation of radical change in business process to achieve breakthrough improvement in product and services. So to better understand uh, BPR, consider the following uh, analogy. Okay, contohlah you as a professional, uh, professional apa eh? Uh, Memancing lah Okay Contoh you memancing ikan lah Okay Biasa you memancing ikan Dekat tempat uh, On your area kan So you know already What the things Umpan yang kena pakai Bila masa sesuai You nak uh, Memancing uh, Time memancing Yang paling sesuai Petang ke Tengah hari Sebelum Naik matahari ke And you know that Ikan apa yang ada Dekat kawasan tu But let's say You are pergi pertandingan memancing Okay You go to another New area Okay so you can adapt dengan uh, you tahu you, sebelum ni you punya skill skill set untuk mancing tu is from the you punya area tu lah you tahu macam mana uh, contoh umpan sesuai ikan untuk ikan apa kan sebab if you go to the new area yes maybe almost similar to your area yang you, yang tempat local yang selalu mancing tu but this is the new one on the competition tu so you tengok orang lain pakai umpan lain Orang lain pak, uh, guna gear lain kan uh, So You kena Terus make uh, Changes lah Changes That can improve your chance Untuk yes Of course nak dapatkan ikan tu lah On the new uh, places Atau tempat competition Yang you Pemancing tu Okay Okay uh, So That's I can say lah On the analogy Alright Actually BPR goal okay, uh, To reorganize Complete flow of data In a major section of An organization As long Eliminate unnecessary steps Okay We don't want the Waste uh, Time for Unnecessary step We want to Speed uh, The Information process And achieve synergy Between the steps Okay Make sure the step Is continuation And have uh, Meanings Okay and become more responsive to future change Let's say yeah, if we have encountered any new technology Our system too can adapt Ataupun we can just uh, transfer the data Into that new system or database uh, easily Okay, uh, before that 
there are several uh, things ah. First step in BPR efforts uh, actually relates to understand what understanding what process to change. Okay, to do this, you must first understand uh, which process represent the key business process for the organization. So kita kena actually tackle on the key business process. Okay, key business process actually is uh, the structured, uh, measured. A set of activity designed to produce a specific output for a particular uh, customer or market. So it focus on the customer and the outcome, uh, and it's, it's the same technique as requirement determination are used. Okay, so you have to uh, maybe ask the question uh, on the system that you want to pursue. To how important is the activity? Uh, to delivering and the outcome or the output of the products, how feasible is changing the activities? Okay, and maybe how dysfunctional is the activity uh, when it's been uh, touched, lah. Okay, uh, which activity need radical change? Of course, uh, we gonna tackle on the importance of activity, feasibility of change. Is it easy to change to the new ways or not? Transform to the new ways and level of this function of current activity, okay, which I said just now. Uh, okay, once key business actually uh, in this uh, process of engineering is by you look on this disruptive technology. Okay. Uh, in in the definition, if it disruptive technology, a uh, technology that enable the breaking of long held business rule that inhibit organization, uh, from making radical business changes. Okay. Uh, so information technology must be applied to radically improve business process. Of course, on this uh, improvement of kita punya IT. Uh, kita punya internet speeds on the smart uh, phone mobile technology everything so yes it's been mobile apps currently so it can it can be uh, a new ways uh, to transform our business process okay uh, long held organization rule that are being eliminated through uh, disruptive technology so information can appear in only one place at a time okay that's the last time loop rule but when the database come, distribute uh, database allow the sharing of information. You can access information uh, everywhere, uh, wherever in your whatever your key location is. You still can uh, do access the uh, information or knowledge or the data as long you got the internet connection. Okay, last time we have to get to the place and get the file or maybe uh, maybe have to yeah physically be on that place so nowadays no need for that time okay business must choose between centralized and decentralization so but actually once the uh, disruptive technology okay uh, nowadays advanced telecommunication network can support dynamic organiz organizational structure you can be yeah, centralized and decentralized maybe decentralized on several departments and centralized on the uh, HQ Manager must make all decisions, but now this year support uh, tools can add uh, non-managers to do the decision making. Field personnel need office uh, where they can receive store, retrieve, and transfer information. But now wireless data communication and portable computer provide a virtual office for workers. Now we just submit uh, through the apps ke, through this uh, system. No need for another personnel uh, to be in the office to re receive our uh, information or data. The best contact with a potential buyer is personal contact. Yes, it's correct. But interactive communication technologies allow complex messaging uh, capability. Now, yes, we can do a Zoom call, uh, Google Meet call. Of course, uh, sekarang ni ada Webex. Okay, people because we cannot be like like. Now there's a situation in which people cannot cross the borders, of course, of the COVID-19. So we use the yes interactive communication to communicate and do the collaboration with the others. You have to find out where things are. 
uh, yes automatic identification and tracking technology knows where things are now we can search simply on the query on the data warehouse or database uh, plans get revised periodically but high performance computing can provide real time updating okay Alright, I can say another one uh, like what is disruptive technology ni like uh, uh, to Airbnb Okay, last time hotel, if you want to go to some place, you have to go to the hotel which is okay lah, kalau price okay, okay But sometimes the location that don't have this hotel So we got Airbnb actually, you can uh, Transform your house or your room to be uh, like a uh, part time lah, part time hotel ataupun uh, part time room punya uh, sewa. Okay, macam same as a uh, Grab. Okay, last time taxi we need to go to the place. Uh, we have to wait for the taxi. Nowadays we just call the Grab uh, car to come to pick us and send us to the location that we. Uh, you that we w want to go so macam dulu yes we want to order the food we have to go to the restaurant nowadays you can just simply uh, order from your apps that's a disruptive technology you can uh, think something that can be uh, make it easy lah make it easy and something that will apa ni will change completely on how the last traditional punya method to become a new thing okay if you get something like your idea on this kind of disruptive technology yes this thing can make uh, money actually okay okay requirement <coughs> determination using agile methodology okay of course the continual users uh, involvement Okay, in chapter 1, I think you read about the complaint or uh, criticism of the traditional waterfall SDLC. Uh, so, one of the criticism was that waterfall SDLC allow user to be involved in the development process only if the early stage of analysis. Uh, once the requirement had been gathered from them, uh, the user were not involved again in the process until the system was being installed and they were asked to sign off on it. So typically by the time that the user saw the system again It was nothing like what they had imagined uh, When they gone to the uh, analysis phase so Also given how the business process has changed uh, since analysis ended The system most likely did not uh, adequately address user needs So this view is uh, this view of the traditional waterfall SDLC And user involvement is a stereotype of the process It does not describe every, every system development project and that used the waterfall model however limited user involvement has been common enough to be perceived as, as a real and serious problem in system development ok so one approach to the problem of limited user involvement is to involve the user continually throughout the entire analysis and design process uh, so that it can be the best approach uh, when the development can follow the analysis design code test cycle uh, favored by the agile methodology methodology okay because the user can provide information on the requirement and then watch and evaluate as those requirements are designed coded and tested so this iterative process can continue through several cycles until most of the major fundamental most of the major functionality of the system has been developed so extensive extensive involvement of user in the analysis and design process is a key part of a uh, many agile approach but it was also a key part of the rapid application development Alright, uh, on the agile user-centered design okay, Actually, continual uh, user involvement in system development is an excellent way to ensure that requirements are captured accurately and immediately implemented in the system design So, 
you have to look on the uh, step this one get a group of programmer and list users testers and facilitator uh, at the same time document complaint of the current system okay, which is all these uh, people will be contribute or or what this is the problem and the by important user roles okay what they need to do next and determine and prioritize and describe tasks for each of the roles make sure they meet the objective and group similar tasks into interaction context okay you classified what the issues what the uh, module that been that want to be changed associate each interaction contact with a user interface for the system and prototype the interaction context involve the user on this uh, user interface of course you want to make sure it's user friendly and step through and modify the prototype we do uh, try and error lah from time to time and make sure that the prototype can be transformed into the real action system Okay, this is uh, such an example uh, on extreme programming planning. Explore commitment, commit, commitment, and the steering. Okay, I actually the last one, the electronic commerce application, is not part in the uh, syllabus in our syllabus, but we just go through or as for for the general knowledge. Okay, imagine uh, you have this e-commerce application. So in the navigation of this uh, website too, you have to look carefully. Okay, what the uh, management system capabilities? What the what the reason actually why the system is built and customer inventory information is stored. Okay, make sure you recorded every transaction and uh, system prototype evolution. Uh, make sure that the system can be uh, upgrade lah from time to time to suit the latest technology or latest involvement in this uh, world nowadays okay finish on chapter 6 this is the summary of the chapter what have you learned so make a note especially yes you can actually make a note uh, from this uh, point okay so if you're missing any uh, please make sure that you cover all all on this point here okay thanks for watching see you on the next video stay safe goodbye